Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation, how radical it can get. We have the square root of z plus i is equal to zi. We've probably done a similar problem before, like z plus i equals zi. I don't know if you've done z minus i is zi. Those problems are very popular, and I thought maybe this would also be popular. Are you going to make it popular? Hopefully so. Don't forget to support the channel. I also have another channel. Oh, by the way, did I say that this channel is all about complex numbers? If I did forget, I apologize because this channel is all about complex numbers. So in this channel, we do complex number problems only. I have another channel called Cyber Math where I do algebra, number theory, trigonometry, and geometry problems. Not very many these days, but planning to get to it. So we've done those before, I think, and now we're going to do the radical version. And I'll be presenting two methods for this problem. The first method is going to be, as you might guess, isolating the radical and squaring both sides. Before we square both sides, we could probably do ourselves a favor and factor out an i, which will make things a little easier. Now consider you're squaring everything like this and like that. Remember, i squared is negative 1. If you ever forgot that, please remember all the time. i squared equals negative 1. That's the most important thing. You can forget everything but not this one. And if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. All right. Now, square root of z squared is z in the complex world as well, right? And this one is going to become z squared minus 2z, or not 2z, plus 1, sorry, I had to say that, times i squared, which is negative 1, right? So we're going to go ahead and distribute to negative 1. That's going to give us negative z squared plus 2z minus 1. Now let's put everything on the left-hand side where things are positive. Z squared, Z minus 2Z, it's minus Z, plus 1 equals 0. Uh-oh, this looks familiar. How? If you've done some complex numbers, you should know this, right? Are we talking about some cube roots of some number, right? Okay, well, we'll get to it. But here's what we can do. We can just use the quadratic formula. Easy. Z equals negative B plus minus the square root of B squared 1 minus 4AC, uh-oh, we get a complex solutions. Of course, channels about complex numbers. What do you expect? Negative 3. If you square root that, you're going to get uh, square root of 3i divided by 2. And if I separate these, is that does that ring a bell? I hope it does because if you've done some trigonometry, this should be familiar to you. Um, you can also separate them and like, write it like this. 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And I just want to tell you something. This is cosine of pi over Three, which is 60 degrees and this is sine of pi over 3 so this can be written as cosine pi over 3 plus i times sine pi over 3 uh oh Euler's formula what am I talking about well I'm talking about the following e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta makes sense so we can write this as e to the power i pi over 3 and you can also plot it, graph it, whatever, argon play, right? So that is a very special number. You know why? Because by using the Moivre's theorem, sorry, I can't pronounce the French version, but if you take that and raise it to the third power, and the motivation behind it is the presence of pi over three, because by the Moivre's theorem, this becomes cosine pi plus i sine pi. But cosine pi, if you know your unit circle, Cosine pi is negative 1, and this is 0. Uh-oh, we got negative 1 by cubing a number. What is that supposed to mean? That means this number is one of the cube roots of negative 1. There are three of them, right? And obviously, one of them is negative 1 because negative 1 cubed is negative 1. You get the idea? But there are three cube roots in the complex world, and number has n nth roots, two square roots, three cube roots, so on and so forth. Make sense? Okay, great, but... You can also get this solution in a different way because of the specialty, specialness of this equation. Why is it so special? Let me show you. This is really cool. So this is equal to zero, right? I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by z plus one. Right? Great. And this left-hand side, when distributed, gives you z cubed plus one. You know why? Because it's sum of two cubes. Yay. This means z cubed is negative 1. Doesn't that mean z equals negative 1, though? you got to be careful. You multiply both sides by z plus 1, so in, you introduced a 0 to the equation. Extra additional 
extraneous, whatever. So, yes, you don't want z to be negative 1. Uh, but as long as z does not equal negative 1, you're good with this, which means you're going to be dealing with the two cube roots of negative 1. And what are they? Come on, we just talked about it, right? It is 1 plus minus root 3 over 2. So 1 half plus root 3 over 2i and 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. Of course, these are conjugates, but they're also... One of them is the square of the other, right? No, it's the other way around. Anyways, you get the idea. Those are the solutions. What is the second method? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, right? It's time. But this is a very, very special equation. Wait a minute. Do all the solutions satisfy this equation? Do you know? I mean, here's the thing you need to check. With radicals, you always have to check. So suppose you end up, um, hmm, let's see. Let's just go with this one, okay? Square root of 1 half minus root 3 over 2i plus i. And on the other side, we have this times i. This one is easy to evaluate. Let's just do it. Uh, that's going to give me root 3 over 2 but because of the negative i squared. Minus, plus I mean, 1 half i. Hmm. Is that the same as the left-hand side? In order for that to happen, this needs to be root 3 over 2 minus 1 half of i. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure. So let's go ahead and convert it to polar form. How do you write it? Uh, that is cosine is, that was a cosine 60, right? So that's going to be negative 60, negative pi over 3. So cosine uh, negative pi over 3 plus i sine negative pi over 3. So then it'll be the square root of that. So I have to cut in half, negative pi over 6 plus uh, i sine negative pi over 6. Is that going to work? We need to check, right? Where's negative pi over 6? Negative pi over 6 is going to be here. And when you check the real part, it's going to be a positive sign, uh, which is the same as cosine pi over 6, which is cosine 30, which is root 3 over 2. And this will be a negative sign. So it looks like it is working. Yay. Awesome. So both are probably good solutions. I didn't check the first one, but that's for you to check, okay? Let me introduce the second solution real quick because it's going to be real quick, okay? Well, sort of. Root z plus i is zi. I'm going to go ahead and set root z equal to something. How about w? If this is w, this will be w squared. And guess what? You'll get another complex equation. But this time, it's a little different because i is the coefficient of w squared. And then if you solve it, you're going to get the solution. Let's solve it. w equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is plus plus. 4i squared. And that is negative 4, negative 3, plus minus root 3i over 2. As you can see, we get the same solutions. Wait a minute, isn't this weird? So w is square root of z. So square root of z is equal to this or this, right? So by squaring both sides, you should be able to get the solutions. Are we going to get the exact same solutions are, and are they both valid? That's for you to find out. I'm going to leave it as an exercise. Please don't hate me for that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.